So, back to Matthew 24, 25. See, I've told you ahead of time, our Lord is anticipating that what he says here will be available for individuals to hear centuries into the future. Yeah, that's not ruled out. So that those living in the end times will hear it and act accordingly because he's given you a perspective here in Matthew 24 through his accounting to the disciples in his mortal lifetime as the Son of God before the cross, first century. And they're asking him, what will the signs be? So he's told them ahead of time what the signs will be. Now, this the ahead of time of when they'll be uh, there and you'll see them. Well, they weren't there in the first century, but that doesn't mean they're not going to be there. That doesn't mean that they, uh, they, the signs would occur in their lifetimes. There's no guarantee except the one thing Jesus talks about. Events on the earth over whom God is totally sovereign. These are the events leading up to what Jesus was talking about, the signs of the time and when he will be coming again. So there you go. Now, our Lord is anticipating that what he says here will be available for individuals to hear. Again, I say, centuries into the future, so that those living in the end times, he's describing the end times, will hear it. Was, have these things occurred yet? Not in AD 70, as described clearly. Now, you have to prove to me, Grant Hill, Glenn Hill, that these are figurative, and if they're figurative, you have to show evidence that they are, and they haven't been. You can't limit everything here, which is worldwide in scope, to just Jerusalem in AD 70. So we'll hear it and act accordingly. And here is still more warning to future individuals, especially about false prophets and false Christ. Matthew 24, 26. So if ever, anyone tells you, there he is, out in the desert, do not go out. From you, protected place of your protected place of hiding. Or who he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. Now the thing is, Stuff like this might happen. AD 70, it did, like this, but not similarity doesn't prove identity. The problem is, the events leading up to this point did not occur. So this is a similar persecution, not the same, and certainly not as extensive and worldwide. The Thessalonian believers, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, they thought they had missed the rapture because they were going to severe persecution, very similar to the end times. From the Word of God written centuries ago to individuals living in the end times, the Lord Jesus Christ is telling them how they can specifically act in order to save their physical lives. Do not come out of your protected hiding place when anyone tells you there he is out in the desert or here he is in the inner rooms. But instead wait until the true Lord comes himself. Tribulation saints are to watch for the signs of our Lord's coming. The problem is, there was no waiting in the first century for the Lord to come because these events had not occurred in sequence to the great extent that they're written here and uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to Matthew. So if you're advising now, Jesus is telling the, the, uh, the disciples in the first century and this became written in the first century so those in the first century could realize, okay, is this the tribulation period or not? Nevertheless, if there were a danger, they would escape, and they have a number of times. AD 70, they made the attempt to escape. But those who didn't escape, millions died in the temple, the destruction by Rome. This, they uh, put it under siege, and then they starved to death, and they came in and killed everybody. Matthew 24, 27, For as lightning that comes from the east is visible, even in the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man. So, lightning. Where was the lightning, A.D. 70? See, these sequential events, the extent to what they come, you have to pay attention. If this didn't come, this is not it. Now, this may be something danger, dangerous, and you should flee. But that's not it. So let's review a verse studied earlier, which sheds light on Matthew 24, 27. Matthew 24, 23. So what will be the true side of your coming, the disciples asked. Jesus Christ, coming. The disciples, being Jews and totally uninformed about the mystery of the rapture and the church, only had our Lord's parousia, appearance in mind, his second coming, to establish his reign on earth. 
Where's the rain on earth? A.D. 70. So our Lord specifically answers their question about the signs accompanying his second coming. Glenn Hill, read these signs. So verse 24, 7 says, you are still, you who are still living during the tribulation time. So far we've given you that. So far it's not here. Don't look for the Lord to come into or from a limited area, such as an area in the desert or inside a room in a building or with a, an accompanying army led by Titus, Roman army. That's not it. Our Lord's coming will be miraculously visible everywhere on earth. Like lightning is visible everywhere on the horizon. Where's the lightning? AD 70. So the glory of our Lord's coming will be that much more visible everywhere on the earth. That's why I put it in caps. That didn't happen. How do you explain that, Arthur Hill? Acts 1, 9 and 11. After he, Jesus, said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Was that literal? Or was that going to be figurative? Men of Galilee, they, angels said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go to heaven. That didn't happen in A.D. 70. Come on. The Lord's second coming is going to happen the same way when he left. Revelation 1, 7. Look, he is coming with the clouds. See how we corroborate. And every eye will see him. Not every eye of the Jewish nation, which you would limit the second coming and the destruction just to Israel. He's coming with the clouds. And every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. The Jews of the tribulation period who represent those in ancient days who had our Lord crucified. That's plausible. And all the peoples who are unbelievers of the earth. Notice, not just Israel. And all the peoples who are unbelievers of the earth will mourn beside because of him. The judgment they know that he brings. So shall it be. Again, the scope is worldwide. A.D. 70. Local. Matthew 24, 28 and Luke 17, 37. See, if these things don't match up, the rest of your book is nonsense. And I keep reading it, and it would take me a hundred volumes to go over and say the same thing I'm saying here. These events, these historical events leading up to the second coming, and the second coming itself, coming in the clouds, whole world will see you. And thereafter, to the new heavens and the new earth, even Peter said that. And you think that's figurative? Matthew 24, 28, and Luke 17, 37. Wherever there is a carcass, there will be there will vultures gather. Another sign, which indicates that our Lord is imminently due on the scene of the earth, for his parousia will be the devastating and unimaginable amount of human carnage in Jerusalem? No, all over the earth. I get online. I don't think he gets these. Well, no, it's just all over the earth of Israel. You can't put that in there. This will not be just symbolic of an earth gone dead with sin, as you might say, but an actual reality which will stun the sense of many who remain alive after all of God's wrath continues to pour out on rebellious mankind. There's no reason to make this figurative or symbolic of something. Luke puts this verse in a more complicated, completed context. Luke 17, 30 to 37. You're going to refute Matthew? Let's see if you can refute Luke. It will be just like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. Christ's second coming. It will be just like this. It will be like the destruction of Sodom. Was that figurative? On that day, no one who was on the roof of his house with goods inside should go down to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will preserve it. Preserve it by submitting to the sovereignty of Christ, to his plan of salvation, and then to his discipleship. This is during what period? Tribulation period. A person living during the tribulation will preserve his life from physical death. Somebody's got to survive in order for Christ to come and rule over humanity. There's no humanity. There's all, they've all died. Satan has won the battle. The physical life of those who become believers 
and then who remain faithful under our Lord's sovereignty, losing their lives in submission to his plan for their lives, will actually be preserved. I like the word actually there. Actually be preserved throughout the tribulation period from physical death. They'll live on into the tribulation period hundreds of years. Unfaithful believers will lose their lives because the second coming, before the second coming, the unfaithful believer who acts out of his own flesh to preserve his own life, going along to get along in the temporal life there, never having trusted in Christ for salvation or direction, will lose his life, many at the time of our Lord's second coming. I tell you, on the night, on that night of the Lord's return, his second coming, two people will be in one bed, one will be taken to die, and the other left on the earth to live. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. Is this only Israel? It says the whole earth. The one who is the unbeliever will be taken and physically killed and sent to the lake of fire. And the other who will be surviving a faithful believer, a surviving faithful believer, will be left to live on into the millennium. Now here is the key to the context of this passage in the next verse. The disciples asked, where, Lord, they asked. As previously asked in verse 35, where will the one who was taken be taken to, the disciples asked. He replied, where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. Those that are taken will be taken and slain. Therefore the earth will literally be filled with millions of dead, rotting human carcasses, food for the vultures. This is a worldwide scenario because it says so. Matthew now gives a tremendous visual scenario of the precise moment the whole world, all of mankind, both dead and alive, has been anticipating. This will be the most momentous event of all time. This is not figurative. Immediately after the distress of those days, now we're not looking at Titus surrounding Jerusalem. Immediately after all of this tribulation wrath that God has poured out upon the earth, not Rome upon Jerusalem, the sun will be darkened. This is not figurative. This has happened at other times and reported How about eclipses. And the moon will not give its light. That happens during eclipses. The stars will fall from the sky. In other words, the sky will appear to have no stars in them. And the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Somehow there will be some kind of a phenomenon that will, people will look up to the sky and see all kinds of turmoil and things happening. Maybe hear and see visual. But that's the panoramic of the whole world, not just Jerusalem. How come that wasn't actually reported in some of the historical accounts of A.D. 70? Luke 21, 25 to 26. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars on the earth. Nations, not just Israel. Nations, not one nation. Nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Where there's, where's there a sea around Jerusalem? Mediterranean is a little bit further away. Hello? Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken, whatever that means. There will be some kind of supernatural phenomena, which isn't reported in AD 70. What do you, how do you explain that figuratively, spiritually? Each one, if you say it's spiritual, you have to explain how do you get that. These things, these phenomena, a lot of them, have happened in a smaller scale. We have things like atomic bombs falling over certain countries, right? Or tests and it appears that the whole sky, the way the rumbling of that explosion can occur, that phenomena, man-made, well, God-made, it's really going to be shaken. Revelation 6, 12 to 14. I watched as he, Jesus Christ, opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. AD 70, where's the earthquake? The sun turned black like sackcloth. There it is, Romans, Revelation 6, made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to earth. Somehow, you're going to see maybe meteorite showers that look like stars falling to the earth. That's a phenomenon. That's, we've seen that. 
As late figs drop from 